this a fireable offense? I mean, look, Bill, I'm not a bigot. You know the kind of books I've written about the civil rights movement in this country. But when I get on a plane, I got to tell you, if I see people who are in Muslim garb, and I think, you know, they're identifying themselves first and foremost as Muslims, I get worried. I get nervous. I think there are people who want to somehow remind us all, as President Bush did after 9-11, it's not a war against Islam. He, President Bush went well, to a mosque. Well, there isn't any theology to involved in this at all, from my perspective, Juan. But you live in the liberal precincts. Yeah, you actually work for NPR. Okay. Yes. Well, not exactly. Not anymore. NPR fired Juan Williams for what you just heard. Here's Williams earlier tonight giving his side of the story to Bill O'Reilly. You didn't hear anything for 36 hours. Nothing. In fact, you know what that tells me? What? Somebody put heat on them. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Because if they had heard it and there had been so much outrage, you would have heard Tuesday morning. Oh, I would have heard that night. But I'm saying, you're exactly right. All of a sudden, let me tell you, I was in Chicago on Tuesday, and people were coming up to me to say, and this was a Muslim guy told, telling me about how his kids, you know, have fears and, and about being identified as Muslims. Thank you for what you said on O'Reilly last night. This is in O'Hare Airport. And then... That night, I start to see in my mailbox emails from, and clearly orchestrated by a Muslim rights group, saying that I am a bigot. Care. Man. That's who did it. Exactly. Care. Okay, so they got to NPR, and then these pinheads, who probably never even watched this program, and they know what you said, they start to make this determination. And people should know that Juan was very sympathetic, by the way, to Muslims during that interview. You didn't hammer them at all. No. no I mean, this is the right. irony of the thing. I right. mean, they take something totally out of context, like one word or one line, and they forget the fact that here I am engaging you, Bill O'Reilly, right? And right. we're having an honest discussion. This is what America should okay. be. Do you know this woman, by the way? I've met her. I don't, I mean, I don't I know. I mean, her. this woman is stone cold dumb. I, and I'm not saying with all due respect. She says, well, Williams um, gives, you're not allowed to give personal opinions. As an NPR analyst, you're not like giving personal opinions. We don't want personal opinions. You weren't given an opinion. Never. You were saying, look, this is how, if you had said after that, and I think all Americans should feel the same way that I do, that would have been an opinion. No. This woman doesn't understand what a, what a feeling is, how I'm feeling, and, as opposed to an opinion. Okay. She must not have lived in America after 9-11. Well, she it's further than that. Then she goes on and gives a speech today. Oh, I know about it. Okay? Yeah. And listen to this clip. Roll it. Juan feels the way he feels. That is not for me to, ju to pass judgment on. That is really his feelings that he expressed on Fox News are really between him and his, you know, psychiatrist or his publicist or, or take your pick. Um, but it is not compatible with a news analyst on N with, with the role of a news analyst on NPR's air. Are you kidding me? I mean, so now I'm a, a psychiatrist. Psycho. Now, now I am mentally unstable. And this, and this and is I'm a woman journalist. who's running this operation. Oh my God! I mean, come it on. is, it that's, is, it's unbelievable. So that's insult. So now and she it becomes apologized. Personal. She apologized. She did not after. To, not to but, me. Well, okay, that's a good point. You were exactly right when you said, you know what this comes down to? They were looking for a reason to looking. get rid of me right. because I appear on Fox News. That's right. They don't want me and talking here's back to up. you. Well, everyone in the media is talking about the firing. I think that they were very wrong. If, he's, if, he, wrong is, if he is giving his opinion, mm -hmm. if he is a contributor, yeah. they're also angry or, or seem to be upset because he contributes to Fox. Again, opinion should be allowed. If you are yeah. a journalist, you have to be more objective, and then there should be a, then you, you know, should I be know, chastised, I, but I, not I, fired. And Lots of people have this idea. They have this, it's like they used to be about, you know, black kids. If you saw ten black kids coming down okay, the street, people you. would, you know, get all right. choked up and say, oh my God, are, are they going to rob me? Or you see a group of teenagers. I mean, it's it, it does happen in us. The, the, the issue that, the point he was trying to make is, I get nervous. Mm -hmm. And that's okay to say. Firing him for saying that, I think right. is kind of yeah. ridiculous. If he had said, when I get around a group of tea partiers, I get nervous, would NPR have fired him? Probably not. What if he mean? said, if he said, with, oh, every time I go, <laughs> <laughs> he said, if he said, if I, every time I go see a Catholic priest, I get nervous, oh, would they have fired him? Maybe. <laughs> no, they would not. I mean, that is a natural reaction of many Americans. It's better to talk about it to th and then to say, 
This is a prejudice we have as a country. It's something we've got to move past, which is what Juan Williams was trying to say, and for that, Mika, he got fired. And you know what scares me about that? It seems like something's wrong with this business. This is disgraceful. NPR needs to hire Juan Williams back, and I think most rational Americans agree with that. Unfortunately, Juan's comments on Fox violated our standards as well as our values and offended many in doing so. And then this. This, folks, is the P.S. de resistance. Maybe I should preface this by, therefore, we're profoundly sorry that this happened during fundraising. <laughs> it happened during fundraising week. These are people who couldn't support themselves if they had to. Now, the Juan Williams firing proves many things. One thing it proves is this. You can still be a bigot if you are black, if you are liberal black. As long as you don't openly consort with conservatives, you can say whatever you want. But if you are a liberal black who consorts with conservatives on their dreaded network, you will ultimately pay the price. Well, NPR has stepped in it this time. Like it or not, they just put the spotlight on themselves. So now everyone is asking, how much taxpayer money does NPR receive, and could firing Juan Williams lead to the funding being cut off? Byron York, chief political correspondent for the Washington Examiner, joins us live. Good evening, Byron. Um, how much money does NPR get of taxpayer money? Well, NPR gets uh, money that originates with the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. This year, Congress gave Corporation for Public Broadcasting $420 million. That's both for public radio and for public TV. About $90 million of it went to public radio. Most of that goes to public radio stations around the country. Some of that comes back to NPR. NPR says that uh, taxpayer money makes up about 1% to 3% of its budget. It's not a big part of it. The rest of it, they say, comes from corporate grants, uh, the fundraising, pledge week, and that kind of stuff. All right, well, if not much comes from it, why don't they just cut and run and stop taking American taxpayer money? They're minimizing the amount they get, $90 million to all the radio, right. and they don't say they don't they don't uh, get all the ninety million, but the radios do. So if they get so little, why don't they cut and run, stop taking it? That has always been the question, and this has been an, this has been a contentious issue forever. Certainly going back to when the Republicans took over the Congress in 1994, they have wanted to defund the Corporation for Public Broadcasting for a long time. Never been able to do it. Conservatives want to do it. Not all Republicans want to do it, which is why they why they couldn't do it. So it it, it is something that comes up. Every time there's an incident like this, for example, on NPR's website, there was a video cartoon not too long ago. Uh, it uh, uh, attacked uh, the Tea Party movement. It was called How to Speak Tea Bag. And it was very offensive to a lot sure. of conservatives. NPR defended it, left it on, but it always raises the question, this is fine in an editorial sense, but why is it being supported by taxpayer dollars? All right, so it has become, at least in certain instances, advocacy radio. That is not though why it was uh, developed or started in the late 1960s. It, so it, it has gone off its mission. No, this came about, uh, the, the, all of public broadcasting came about in the 1960s, partly in, in an entirely different media world. It was a world in which there were two or three broadcast television networks and mostly AM radio around the country. It's a much different situation now and what Republicans are saying, the ones who want to defund Corporation for Public Broadcasting are saying that this is a whole different world. They actually wrote a letter to themselves today. They're starting a new drive to try to defund uh, NPR and the Corporation for Broadcasting. And they say, government funding broadcasting is now completely unnecessary in a world of 500 channel cable TV and cell phone internet access. It is a different world. Well, they have committed suicide. I mean, it's one of the dumbest things they could do is to put the spotlight on themselves about this whole funny thing. Because in this, these economic times, every single American sitting out there saying, what do you mean, the radios get $90 million, you insane, and then it's an advocacy radio? I mean, this, they couldn't have been dumber in how they handled this. <laughs> I mean, they went out of their way to be stupid. No, they couldn't. And, and, and it raised, and as long as they receive taxpayer money, and, and we all know that in Washington terms, $90 million in a, in a budget where we have a $1.3 trillion budget deficit uh, is not relatively a huge amount of money, but every time there's a controversy, Critics can say, with a, I think a lot of uh, good sense, why is this being funded by the taxpayers? Well, I think they've done it to themselves this time. Byron, thank you. Thank you.